you ready? Are you ready? Oh, are you ready to go? Are you ready? Are you ready? Are you ready to go? Hello, this is Mr. T with another uh, calculus uh, tutorial. Today we're going to talk about integration using integ integral tables. So we've learned in this unit a number of methods for finding uh, integrals. We've used basic integration rules. We've re learned rewriting skills so that we can map them into the basic integration rules. We've done integration by substitution, integration by parts, and integration by partial fractions. But even with all of these techniques, there are still functions which cannot be that we cannot integrate. Over the years, mathematicians have figured out integrals to many different types of functions, and they've been captured as a set of rules. Now, these would be too many rules for us to memorize, so they've been organized in tables. In our textbook, I'll be showing a sample of our integration tables. We have a small sample of the integration rules that exist in tables, and the book, the reference book that I used in college, I just looked that up, there were over 400 integral uh, entries into the table. Uh, integ integrating using the tables is simple in concept. We're going to match our original problem with an entry in the table and then apply the rule for that integral. It uh, can be a little bit more difficult than it looks. It takes skill and practice to match the right rule and to match the rule sometimes we're going to need to use substitution to uh, get the proper match. You'll see that in one of the upcoming examples. This is part of uh, an integral table from your textbook in the section that we're working with. So you can see we have all these different patterns in our textbook. They're organized by uh, grouping. So in this grouping, there is in the denominator a constant plus a constant times some expression, u. So you can see these different uh, patterns. Uh, this grouping has a, an expression squared plus or minus some constant squared. You can see a set of rules there. Uh, this grouping involves uh, natural logarithms. Uh, in our table, we go up to 43 rules. As I said, this is just a small subset. So let's look at how we can apply these rules. So our first example problem is here. So we have a constant plus a constant times an expression, in this case x. So that comes from our first grouping here. And in particular, we've got the same expression, which in our case is an x and an x here. So we're going to be using rule 10. Now I've copied rule 10 here. Now we need to reorganize a little bit. Uh, we have a 1 up here. We have this constant, so I'm going to move the constant out front. And in this case, we will also be using u is going to be x. So du is the same as dx. And we're going to rearrange the order of this. So this is going to be 1 plus 3x, or 3u. So a is 1, and b is 3. And we're going to pull this constant out front. So if we rewrite this, we've got 1 over, and we said u is the x, and we've got 1 plus 3u, du. So we have our pattern here. So to expand that out, we have 2 out front times now this expression. So we have 1 over a, and a was 1. Len of, now we have u. So I'll just go ahead and leave it with the u's here, and then we'll substitute back in for the x. In this case, since u and x were the same, we could have avoided uh, rewriting this in terms of u. So now we can just multiply here and we get 2 lin and I'm going to put my x's back in. And 
we're done. So again, the hardest part of this one was looking through those tables to find the proper one. We had a expression here in x times here. Uh, so that was the one that it matched. So let's look at another example here. Again, on this one, x and x here. So if I rewrote this denominator here, we've got negative 1 plus 1x. So our a is negative 1, and our b is also positive 1. And u is going to be x, so du is just going to be dx. So we can substitute directly. I had to overwrite here the scan that I took for with my camera here didn't turn out very good for this rule. So now our integral up here is going to be, we've got 2 times 2 times a, which is negative 1, minus b times u, so 1 times u, which is x, all over 3 times b squared, so 3 times 1 squared. I'm just substituting exactly here, and then we'll simplify. And we've got negative 1 plus 1x plus c. So here we've got negative 2, so we've got 2 times negative 2 minus x over 3. And here I'm just going to put that back to x minus 1. And we could factor out a negative here, so our final answer, I'm going to factor out a negative, so we've got negative 2 thirds. These will both come become positive, so I'm going to write that as x plus 2. And then square root of x minus 1 plus c. So again, this one we had x in both the top and the bottom, and we had a square root of a linear pattern. So again, that was using, uh, well actually I didn't copy onto here those set of rules, but in your book it was, as I outlined here, it was rule number 19. So if you're looking that up in the book you can see what the other rules that we could have compared to uh, select this one. Let's look at another example. Now this one we're going to have to do a substitution because in the tables there was nothing with an x to the fourth here. But we do have rules with u squared plus or minus some number. So to match this one, we need to let u is going to be x squared. So this now will become u squared. So du is going to be 2x dx. So we've got to do that substitution like we did uh, earlier in the year. So I need to put, to get my du, I need x dx and I need that 2. So remember we're going to be putting a 2 in here and a 1 half out here. So if I rewrite now, I've got 1 half times the integral and under the square root I've got u squared and 4 is 2 squared and then I've got my du, because that 2x there is my du. So now we have rule 21 here, and we're going to be using the minus. So as we go across, we're using the bottom symbol. So we've got minus, minus, and minus all the way across. Uh, and some of the entries, you'll have a plus minus here and a minus over plus here. So if we're using the bottom symbol, in this, we use the bottom all the way across. If we were using the plus, we would use the top symbol all the way across. So now we've got this one half out front. And now I have to do substitute in here. So I've got one half. Now u is x squared, so I'm going to be substituting back in. And here we've got uh, u squared, which will be x to the fourth, minus our 4. And then we've got our, we're doing the bottom symbol, so we have minus. Now we have a squared. Now a is 2. Uh, a squared is 4. So we've got here 4, len, absolute value. Now u again was x squared plus 
And I can't remember if that's a plus or minus. I think that's a plus, so we'll leave that the plus. And now we've got the square root here. U squared again, which is x squared minus 4. And absolute value. And plus C. So now if we distribute through, I've got the 1 half times the 1 half. So I've got here 1 fourth x squared square root of x to the fourth minus four now this one half here is outside so it's times this so i've got here one half times the four which is going to be two and then times the one half so that's just going to be one And we could be done here, or we could factor out the one-fourth, but I don't think that's worthwhile. So we're just going to leave it here just like this. And our last example here with a lin. Now these were the rules we could use. Uh, this second rule here is called a reduction formula, because you can see on the right side we have an integral. So similar to when we did integration by parts, we're going to have to apply multiple rules. So to apply rule 43 first, u is going to be x cubed. So du is going to be 3x squared dx. So this x squared along with the dx is our du, except we need a 3 here and a 1 third. So we've now got 1 third the integral of ln of u cubed du. So I've got my one-third from out front. Now I have to expand this. So I've got one-third times. Now we've got u ln of u. Now in this case, n is equal to 3. So we have cubed here minus 3, the integral of ln of u, and we're going to subtract 1 from the exponent. And to integrate this, we're now going to use rule 42. So we use rule 43 to expand out here. And this part, we're going to use the rule 42. So this will become u i got so many brackets here. 2 minus 2 ln of u plus ln u squared. And then we're going to have a plus c on the end. Now this whole entire part was times 3. So let's expand that out. So I've still got my 1 third here. So now I've got 3u times 2, so I've got, that's a negative there, so I've, I'm, let me put that negative 3 here. So I've got negative 3 times u times 2, so I've got negative 6u. And negative 3 times u times this, so I've got positive 6u ln of u. And I've got this negative 3 times my ln of u squared. I want that parentheses there. Let me get rid of that. So I've got here negative 3 ln of u squared. And now I can distribute the 1 third, or actually, uh, well, let's do that. So I've got here 1 third u ln of u cubed. And I'm going to put the ln u squared here in order. So now I've got 1 third times negative 3. So I've got negative 1 ln of u squared. So now we've used this. And we've done that one. So now I've got 1 third times this 6u. So we've got plus 2u ln of u. So we've used that one. And now 1 third times this, so we have minus 2 
Uh, that's not a lin. So minus 2u. And then plus c. And our last step, uh, we can substitute in our Uh, oops, this, uh, this U up here, I didn't need this bracket here, so this bracket here was by mistake. So this U is times all the way through here. So this should have had a negative 3 U here. And so we now have, this should be a U. So all of these terms have a u in them. So I'm going to factor out a one-third u. So I'm going to factor out a one-third u. So here I'm left with ln of u cubed. And here I'm going to be left with minus 3 ln of u squared. And here I'm going to be left with plus 6 ln of u. And here I'm just going to be left with minus 6 plus c. And finally, our last step, remember u was x cubed. So we can put x cubed in for our u. And we will have our final answer here. So you can see it's a little tedious with keeping track of all the nested parentheses, especially when we use these uh, reduction formulas. And I'm pretty sure that's the right answer. So then again, this is called integrating by t using tables. And we'll be matching our original problem up with items in the table and keep in mind we might need to do a substitution to get it to work. So good luck with applying integration with tables. Are you ready? Are you ready? Oh, oh.